Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody here today. We are so excited that we are celebrating Unapologetically Black this Friday for Black Lives Matter Week of Action. We have some amazing guests here today, our faculty, Mira Henry, Not Too Fall, and Corday Henry. Um, the three of them are gonna do a real, like kind of family casual talk, like they're sitting in their kitchen or their living room. Um, we're super excited. They're just gonna kind of digest everything that we went over this week, as well as show some great resources. Um, and then I'm just gonna pass it off to Tunde, Baba Tunde, my team partner for this event. And he's gonna talk a little bit more about tonight. Everybody. Um, so after to, uh, this morning is finished, um, please join us again for tonight at 5 p.m. Pacific time for our Fridays at 5 presentation. Um, one of the panelists from uh, this morning, Corday, will be joining us along with Whoopi, um, showing their work and having a great conversation with the SciArc student body. Um, so students, please uh, make sure to join tonight. It's going to be an amazing time and a great finale to what's been a really, really um, fascinating and, and, and engaging week of action so far. So after today, um, please join us again tonight for the finale. And with that, I will pass it off to our three amazing panelists today. I'm so excited to hear them just kick it, talk about all uh, what we've seen, uh, talk about whatever they want to talk about, and to show some amazing resources to continue with. Um, so I hope you'll join me in welcoming our amazing panelists. I give it to you guys. Thank you, Yo. guys. Thank you, Tunde. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate y'all. Yes. How are we doing? That's oh, I want to see what I, we look like on the on the on um, the live stream. Yeah. Can you, can you do that at the same time? Is that possible? I, I, I can um, mute. I you would have to mute it though. I think just to make sure that. Okay, there they go. I'm watching yeah. us. Okay, cool. Okay. So, uh, how, how do we do this? How do we start this off? You know? Um, I don't really know. I mean, what what's What's everyone, what are your thoughts of, about this week leading up uh, until now? Well, should we, should we tell them what the, the, the kind of the, <laughs> let's tell them what we talked about, what we were going to do. True. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> so, so the idea was that, um, that we were going to just use. friends um uh, from teaching together from from seeing each other around town from appreciating one another and um and we thought that we could just uh not prepare particularly but kind of prepare like we went from like a miro board to like a uh, uh, some sort of thread to like just put a folder on your desktop and maybe put some things on there or what I have which is just like tabs on the internet that I can I'm gonna pop over but just some things that we wanted to share with each other it could be our work it could be things we're looking at it could be things that fill us up it can be things that make us laugh jokes um, and we're just gonna try and um, use this time to uh, just vibe with each other and share with one another I think Natu's in her living room. I'm in my bedroom. I am. Yes. <laughs> uh, this back here is like a mirror leftover from, from my thesis. It's just it's just chilling behind my couch. So I don't see the mirror. Y'all are looking at the That's opposite what, wall. The whole thing is a mirror. The whole back <laughs> part. Look, just, yeah. Just glamorous. Not right know that. <laughs> <laughs> Optical illusion. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, and, and hopefully by us showing these the things that we have on our desktop, it's kind of like a sum, right? It's like an informal sum of this right. entire event. You know, um, I think it's really hard to encapsulate all the things that we've engaged with mm -hmm. throughout the week, but I think this is a great way to speak to it. So I'm just excited to see what what y'all have on your desktop. Like, so we're we gonna do rock paper scissors times three. How do we do, how do we figure out how to do <laughs> that? <laughs> Yeah. We can do that real quick. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. All right, ready? Yeah. You between you two. All right. All right, All right. Not to, let's go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. All right, not to. That's you. 
<laughs> no, I think he gets to decide. Oh, yeah. True? Yeah. You go first. Okay. All right. So let me share my screen, um, or before I share my screen, a little, a little preface. So I'm just going to be showing some stuff I'm, I'm working on. Corday, you might recognize Real quick, and let me just pull all this up. Um, so right now, I'm in this space where I'm really trying to define, like, what practice means to me. Um, and, you know, I think, like, when I think about unapologetically black, like, to me, that's, like, just being unapologetically, like, yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been, I've been reflecting and, like, trying to figure out, like, what it is I like to do and what makes me happy um, in terms of, like, my work. And so I'm trying to tap into this, like, visual artist, filmmaker, speaker, just all the things at once. Um, and so I got a couple of teasers for y'all. Um, this first one is uh, a piece. I guess it's like a, I wouldn't call it like a, maybe it's like a documentary piece. You know what? I just realized I forgot to share my sound. Hold on. Let's do this one more time. Should we make a pact that we have to keep our mics on the whole time? Is that crazy? Yeah, we should. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Hold on. I, gotta, I forgot to share my computer sound. All right. So this one is, this is like a quick little teaser for a short I submitted for a film festival that's happening, um, put together by another artist in LA, also another Cyark alum. Um, and yeah, I'm going to just, I'm going to just run it. I'm going to just, I'm going to stop talking. Let's, let's see. Run it. Can y'all hear mm -hmm. that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's quick. Um, I don't know. Um, mm. Should I show everything and then we talk about everything together, or, nah, or nah, let's, how let's, we feel? Let's, let's move around. Let's move yeah, let's around. All right. Yeah. Next I, one. I like this. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep it. I'm gonna just keep all these looping. So I'm gonna mute this one. This next one. This is still in. Let me make sure. Okay. This is nah, still nah, in. No, I think I think I think Mary should read something. Oh me! Oh. I get to read something. I Her? think you should read something, and then yes. yeah. I, I want to. I, I just want to have something against what you just showed. I think it might. Okay. Be nice. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. So let me do this. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Um, I have this. I brought here to sit next to us, um, like 28 books that. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show my, I'll show them my, my 28 books that, uh, not a complete library, but it's 28 books that make me, um, feel whole. Mm. And this is very important. Um, let's see here. Can you, there you can see. So here in that other screen, Phil, can you show them the one where my, where my, my iPhone is okay. on? Let me stop sharing. You got okay. it. So, but I, cause I can read, we can go back and loop what you're doing. If you wanted to do that, uh, Corday, have some, have some, have some work. This is, I, I just pulled like 26 books. I thought 26 letters in the alphabet, right? So I might as well choose 26 books. And these books are, and I can kind of read through what they are, but um, this is, you know, when uh, three years ago, when I did Rough Coat, Victor Jones, my friend, uh, when he came and saw the show, he asked me, you know, who's at my table? And I realized that I didn't know who was at my table. I didn't have a table yet. I didn't know who my table was. Right. And, I, and, I, and I had to, and I had to get it together really quick. Not that all of this existed, but I had to try and figure out what that really meant because I think that it opened up like this kind of intense question for me of like, who, 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 who am I in conversation with? Mm -hmm. um, because it wasn't clear from, it wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, some of these books are, I mean, I very much want to show every single one of these books, which I cannot. I will pick your like top two. Top, top girl. two. Well, look, I wanted to just, I wanted to, 
I wanted to, um, well, this is amazing. This book, there's two books I have to say that I wish I had known existed when mm. I was a student. The mm. first was, first is this, and I'm gonna tell you why this is. Um, this is an exhibition that Care Walker did on um, constructivism and, mm. ar and ideas about architecture. What about that? Mm. And then um, uh, Harlem World, which was a, a much older show, but it's a show that was at the Studio Museum of Harlem mm -hmm. um, that um, uh, was, was done. Uh, uh, Thelma Golden obviously curated it. Um, Amazing. But Thelma's it, amazing. It's an amazing show, and mm -hmm. like uh, Olu Lekum, Amanda Williams, uh, uh, so so many people who are now now in the reconstruction show at uh, at the um, at MoMA. This was the first they were in this show early. This was two thousand seven, something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an incredibly it's a it's a it's a it's a wealth of information. It's a it's a show about architecture. Um, and blackness, um, in this case about Harlem, um, uh, some great essays in this. Uh, and it just, like, I didn't know it existed when I was a student. And it, and that, it, it makes me sad a little because, mm -hmm. well, like, obviously it makes me sad because I, I was looking for this so much when I was a student, um, but also just makes me happy to, to kind of engage, engage it. So, so this is amazing. Uh, this, I, I want to get into that, but for a second, but, but this is, this, this, this is, a, this book, this is an exhibition, Care Walker, y'all know Care Walker. And in fact, I was thinking about Care Walker when I was looking at those beautiful casts yes. that you made. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Right. That's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. Beautiful cast. And like thinking about the, the sugar, Domino sugar, um, uh, um, mm -hmm. like large scale piece that she did in New York. Um, yeah. I mean, thinking about so much in terms of the way, like the huge, the incredible um, fountain that she did at the Tate this past year. Um, there's something in the in the kind of the kind of broken and kind of grotesque quality of the way, and it's the beauty of the of the yeah. features. I mean, so beautiful. So, um, but this, this show, this is amazing. And you have here, like, um, there's a piece by, um, there's a piece in this by, uh, um, a really, really great piece by, um, uh, brother, what's his name? Yeah. And, Craig Wilkins. Oh, Craig Wilkins. Wilkins. Okay. Um, and he writes, you know, he's the sort of the, the kind of father of the kind of hip hop, hip hop architecture project. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he does a beautiful piece just about, but, but the, but what she's talking about, Kara Walker's talking about is, is basically leftover space is basically leftover space and the roughness of, of leftover urban space and how, how that can be claimed as, uh, as, as a kind of black architectural like content. Right. Um, we got a question for you in the chat. Yeah, I'll, and I'll stop doing this, and, I'll, and then I can pause. No, 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 you're, it's all good. Could yeah. you post a photo of your book stack, yeah. Jackie? Jackie said that? Yeah, you should, you should <laughs> post it. You should post it. Tell me about a story or something. I don't know. Make a story. I know. Okay. Yeah. Let, me, let me get off this thing. And not to, you know, in relationship to Kara Walker's work, which is very much about this contemporary storytelling through these silhouettes. Right. And I think about your work, you know, which is these broken fragments, right? I, I really wonder if you've thought about like storytelling in that type of way, like these fragments are actually pieces of story. So I think yes and no. I think like in in sort of making these pieces and, and, and breaking them, I'm mm. trying to like get at like a, a sort of different way of thinking about yourself, you know, like just trying to like, I don't know, open up the like space of like, you know, just thinking freely and creating mm. freely. Cause I feel like, um, I mean, we talked about this, like as an artist, it's like hard to be like, yeah, I'm an artist and like yeah. own that and, and, and just like rock with it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to like, release release things you know it's just Definitely. it's just about letting go like and and maybe through that like you know opening up the space to to think about different ways to tell a story you know yeah. 
I think in a lot of ways, you know, you're making things for your future self. Exactly. You know, you may not have the words and the language right now, but yeah. you're, you're using a lot of things that jazz uses like improv to, to sort of build a narrative for yourself over time. And I think that's a, such a powerful tool. And I think of the same way Mira is like collecting this archive of just black wealth, you yeah. know, and the way that's, that's feeding, that's, that's like you said, Mira, that's making you feel whole. And I think that's such an important lesson to learn is that we gotta we gotta find the things that feeds us. Like, what are the things that make us feel whole? And right. I mean, I really appreciate y'all for for just sharing just what we have right now. Before they know, that was a theme. That was a theme throughout the week, right? Like people mm. talking mm. about. That was why I really appreciated the 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 breadth of of guests that came in and spoke was where it was because it. Um, it, you know, it, they weren't all people who were in architecture, thank goodness. Um, right. And, and, but then, but even those in, in design and in architecture were also just talking about how do you, that, that in order to kind of survive in a, in a, not beyond survive, but in order to thrive, um, uh, ha having to be like agile, uh, you know, yeah. agile and to try and figure out how you, um, move. yeah, how you move, how you can feel, yeah. feel seen and, 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 and acknowledge in terms of your vocabulary, in terms right. of your values mm -hmm. that so you can't necessarily assume that you can get it in one spot. You can't necessarily get it in one spot, you know? Um, and that's like this, like kind of incredible release to say, Oh, <laughs> but I'm older, you know? So for me, like, I was like, Oh, it was like, took me a little bit. And I was like, Oh yeah, I can't get it in one spot. It's not going to mm. work that way. Right. Mm. I love that. Um, I think I should share something. Since we're talking yeah, about you movement, you should. Um, let, me, let me share something, and then we can switch after that. But um, So I cut together these, these three pieces that I had on my desktop. Mm. Um, let me make sure I share my screen. I'm going to share one of them right now. I think I'm going to share sweat with you all. Um, so we, we're going to sweat a little bit. This trilogy, yes. Blood, yeah. and tears. Let's have here for it. Can y'all hear it? Yeah. I will always love you. How I do. Let go of a prayer for you. Just a sweet word. Table is prepared for you. I mean, you just can't get it all in one place. You know, you just, you know, you can't, you can't get it all in one place. You gotta, you gotta find things that make you feel whole. And right. sometimes you gotta move through those things. So I don't know, it just, it just felt like the right, right time to share that. Yeah, I got chills. Mm. That was like, yeah. I'm, Corey, I, do you I, dance? I know, I'm, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I talk about, I talk about this with Jeremy all the time. Um, back home, we got this tradition uh, called Beach of Feet in D.C. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't 
necessarily beat my feet all the time, but I was an enthusiast. I went to all the parties and really just watched the whole whole movement and been a part of it. So I think just that alone kind of got me excited about movement art. And um, and I was also lucky enough to be exposed to like a lot of dancers uh, throughout grad school. So I think those two just make me always you know think mm. about movement. All right, y'all, we got a question. I don't know who this is directed for, but I'm, I'm guessing it's you, Corday. We got, could you speak about the importance of role models in and out of architecture? Or like, how, where do you find, or do you take inspiration for how to model your own future from David Eskenazi? And then we got another one from Shigo Fatso, the concept of emotive spaces has been doing circles in my ideation. Mm -hmm. How do you posture, how to posture space to emote? Please, please speak about emotive spaces, posture and emoting in general. Mm. Shea Fatso, you also have to put in words there, my dear, because you are such a wordsmith. Yeah. <laughs> like language, words, tonality, intonation in all of that, like she, you know, you know, you should really like, that is such a powerful like mode for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would try it. Like I love Corday, the way in which, you know, the, the format of the piece you just showed with the two screens and language too, mm -hmm. you know, and sound and the kind of overlay of all those things. And I think that the poetry, Shego Fatso, that you, um, of the re way you read things and think through things and roll things around. I would really try and figure out also how that can really be seen as part of content when you think right. about, you know, you know, how you just be present, you know, in your creativity. I, I agree. I'm like, I'm just stuck on the word posture. Mm. Right. I'm just stuck on that, that language right there. Like the, the, the idea that something is standing up or slumping mm -hmm. over and what, what that means with that relationship to the body and space. I mean, yeah, your language is on another level. Like, so I can't wait to hear more of, of what you're doing. I was thinking about when you were talking about, um, what do you call it, Corday, in, in DC? Foot, Beat, your foot your Beat your feet. Beat your feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, West Coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about um, this book, um, the Astor's book on um, mm -hmm. how to build a house museum. And it's uh, about, um, but the house, you know, the house is yes, the house, but also house is like house music mm -hmm. and, how, and the sort of like black tradition in like creating like house music in Chicago and like just the, also just the kind of turn of, of words to say that it's, um, it can, it can, I find that like so um, productive, like in order for you to be able to leap between um, like, uh, I don't know, like, I guess people would say like discourses or something, but like, like just, in our, you know, like those kind of forms of association. I mean, like, I mean, obviously like when, when you, you know, when we read Fred Moten in the way, his way he turns words and when you're mm -hmm. just like, it like makes you realize how deeply connected so many or like connections that are going to now be made can mm. be made. And so when I think about how to build a house museum and then think about it in terms of house music in terms of and in terms of like vibing and 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 like underground black space at a certain moment time that has passed, you know, um, so I don't know. There's something about uh, also just the movement of words. Mm. Right. The, the oral tradition, you know, the, it's poetry, I think, it's poetry. And I, and I think of the, the things that I've seen from Natsu and the videos that you've been putting together, because a lot of it has uh, audio too as well, right? Sound yeah. component, it's an audio component, a visual component. Do you want to yeah, share I, something? Um, I mean, audio, like, I think, I mean, I can share this next one, kind of touching yeah. on like how to build a house, layering. I think layering is like a thing or a theme that's like constantly in my practice or, or making itself apparent in my practice. And so um, layering like video content with sound, I think I'm, I'm working on this right now, um, trying to like touch on or, or sort of maybe like make fun of the like YouTuber makeup tutorial tradition mm -hmm. and um, kind of like just, you know, putting a whole bunch at the same time, but 
like the whole like, idea okay. behind I'm definitely not dark this colors this exercise are are can you hear it shake up also is what I'm to gonna go ahead and do is I'm just like gonna use my finger and we're gonna make up. So I'm not going back to the nomad palette. Off. We're gonna pack I'm on just going to start a gold from the beginning. Here. Um not all the way mm. not all the way from the beginning, but Actually, um oh no. going to apply another layer of foundation and, and just start brush another look. Brush. And what um whatever part of this look Packing comes through, we're just gonna roll with it um and see what happens. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> love. Thank love you. It. Thank you. It's so, so I got, there's like, so, it's long. Like each of those looks took like anywhere from 18 minutes to like 30. Mm. So I'm still trying to cut all that stuff together to figure out like what I want to keep, what I want to, you know. Did you see that, Courtney, did you see that Lord of Simpson show at Underground two years ago? Possibly. Where it was the films, and the, there was the film. There was that one space where I don't know if you saw it not too, but there were, she's she, she zooms in really close just to this like a grid of people, like right. really close, right up in here. And if you've seen it, um, and they're singing, right. um, um, but there's something kind of I love the I like um I like the when I was looking at it the um the one on the right the uh the you on the right from right. my screen because she's like doesn't she's kind of annoyed, right. <laughs> Honestly, I want, I want more faces. I want right. more to do. I want no, I mean, there's, so I did. I did six looks, and I did them like one after the other. I mean, I'm explaining that, like me in the center is kind of explaining what what is happening. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Some of the faces I'm making, like on the left, where I'm like focused, right? It's just trying to draw that line like straight face really close to the camera and then you hear oh no <laughs> like, I, those moments too i think are really like funny to me like there's something comical about this uh, personally i mean i'm For sure comical is like not the right word but i don't know it's pretty i don't know it's pretty funny this is just stuff i'm working on i'm like who knows what what this is going to turn out to be like, but it's fun to do. I, I remember when you, 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 we talked about this when I was at SciArc, you know, and you were like, yo, I got this idea. I want to try to, you know, pull makeup art into architecture, right? Right. And at the time, you were really nervous about it, right? It was like, this, it's a really radical idea. Right. And now, and now it very much, you know, you're operating in multiple levels, both as a professional, you know, working on music videos and doing your own projects and, and also as an artist and an architect. And uh, how, do you, how do you feel about that? Is it still some uncertainty or? You... Um, definitely some uncertainty. I mean, I think to me, there's a lot of like, mm, around the word like architect. Cause I feel like mm. it's one of those things where personally I'm like, you can't call yourself an architect unless like you were actually like out there doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of people out there like, oh, I'm a, like I was on a shoot and a, on a call sheet, the like creative director or something for the whole thing, it said creative architect. And I just was like, live it. I was like, yo, you cannot <laughs> just throw the word architect like around silly nilly. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's something very specific, you know, like, you don't walk around calling like a physical therapist a doctor. Like it's not the same thing, you know? Mm. Like you could be in the same like realm, but like respect, you know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, I, so I'm, I'm cautious about like claiming the term architect. I'm always like, I'm an artist. I was trained as an architect so I could think like that, but I don't actually practice. So I can't use that, you know? And I think like, Mm. I don't know there's like a like culture like pop culture in general is trying to like claim that word to like use it to mean something that that it shouldn't you know mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know how y'all feel about that. That's just me, though. I'm like, mm, uh. yeah, I'm, I'm curious what Mira thinks. What, what you yeah, think? I mean, I have like there are two like two totally different like um, things are pulsing my brain when you when you say that one, which is. Um, I'm thinking about what one I'm thinking, no, 
one part of my brain says no that like if we if we stop like that's part of elitism and part of the um exclusion and uh and also part of the ex um like the um like yeah just like uh narrowing um right. and of our field to a point where you don't actually which is part of why there's oftentimes so little black voice you know, mm -hmm. because of but but really like space making place making um like all of that urban thinking is happens can, can you can be can be thought of like if we can just if we can shift a little bit <laughs> mm -hmm. then we can actually include more voices right so that's why but so that's that's one of the things that like makes me like anxious when you say say that mm. the other side of my, my head thinks about and this is a uh, like a like kind of a sidebar which is that i'm writing a piece right now on uh for a book on norma sklarik mm. and um, you know, she and I had a chance to interview um, somebody that she uh, built. She she had she was she she had her own practice from 1985, um, just for five years, four or five years. She was up in like an all, all women's um, architectural practice, mm -hmm. and so I've been really sitting in her. Um, like I've been trying to like really sit and like I, I've been really moved. I, I mean, she's an amazing human being, um, and her she she made did so much, and she was like capital a architect like and that yeah. she like to a point where it, kind of like you described not to like and also kind of a, a sort of really belief in the profession of architecture in licensure in accreditations in in aia in the kind of like infrastructures and things that really support uh, like high levels of expertise when it comes to like building things in the world in a very tactical yeah. practical manner and she was a queen she knew how to do it and she she exceeded, she excelled at a level that is so huge. And when it, so I think about that at the same time, I'm thinking like, no, then I'm going to, we're going to lose that like Amanda Williams and we're going to lose the, lose the not too falls. We're going to lose, right. the, we're going to lose all of that, which like that would just literally kill me and kill me like as an educator in terms of thinking about who, who we are educating, how we can allow people to see themselves in a new way. And at the same time, I'm thinking like Norma, <laughs> I'm thinking Norma and I'm thinking like she, there's this amazing quote that her son said, you know, she had two children, her children, she, she had her children really young. And mm -hmm. so she did all, I mean, her legacy, her, her life path is amazing. And she, 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 uh, she had amazing boundaries also. And she was able to exceed at a very excel and also like left work at 5 PM and went home and took care for children and had a garden and played bridge and these did these things. She was very, it was a, she's kind of an amazing person for, 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 for everybody to think about. I think about her a lot. Um, uh, in terms of balance, but, um, and ambition, but, uh, her, her son said that, uh, you know, my mother, and I'm going to get it a little bit wrong, but my mother, I, I have it somewhere. I'm going to open it up really quick. Cause it really, the language is really beautiful. Take your time. He says, um, he says she would tell you that design was the easy part mm. that she, she, what she would do is she would make it real. What kind of concrete, what kind of nuts and what kind of bolts, what kind of glass she was in production. And she would tell you that production was the real work. And to me that like, I really get strength from that. I really get strength from that because this is a, a person who she wasn't, she was not um, in her era, she was not allowed to be the design architect. There was no way, you know, in 1950s, a black woman, no one even knew there would be such things as a black woman be licensed in the 1950s, let alone somebody who you could like put in front of your client and say, this is going to be the lead architect for your design architect for your project. No way. $10 million project. No way. So she, that was not even a part of her reality to be the design architect. She was, she was a project architect. She was the person, she was the person who took the design idea and made it completely real and yeah. had this amazing ability to understand all the trades, to look, work on site, to uh, detail the she detailed like the the big blue whale the pacific design center that she detailed that facade like she elevated mm. glass design glass facades because she understood how she took pleasure she was she was interested in technology she's interested in how things come together and how to make it like like nice you know like mm. really, really 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 nice you know she'd not mess around and i think about how like how just baller that is like this like she's like yeah you know, like i think about like just kind of like like legacy and like like and like lineage and like tectonics and stuff like that. And I think yes, 
mm. you know. So so I have two two responses in, in my brain when I think about that, and I think that they're both kind of, you know, I don't know. Right. Yeah, put them both out well, there. I, mean, I think I think it's <laughs> I think like to the response to the like no no don't leave <laughs> no I don't think it's about leaving that's the thing I don't think it's about leaving I think it's just about realizing like where you contribute to that you know what I mean like or how you contribute to it like I think there is obviously this sort of like technical like how does this put how is this put together like what is that attached to how does that work and the like well think about it like what's the story you know what's the like you know what's the the sort of like not creative part of it but what's the like stuff that mm -hmm. leads you to here right mm -hmm. like I feel like I'm the conversations I'm in I'm like this thing not not the technicals you know yeah. but like that like the ability to like do that or sort of execute that kind of work is what I think makes like an architect, an architect, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could be in architecture without being an architect yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a question of like recognizing that work, right? Like you're like Norm Norma and like her ability to like elevate a type of like tectonic system because like that's what she knows and that's what she loves to do, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas like I could talk materials, but like I'm thinking materials in like a tactile sense. Like, what does that feel like in your hands? Mm -hmm. You know, not like, how is that attached to like be structural or something? <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, that's not like that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's like it's. I'm I'm not part of the conversation. We can't be part of the conversation. It's just it's a different conversation. Like, it's just it's a different it's a, conversation. It's, well, it's a different conversation that relates, but it's also about just like respecting people that like can do that. You know, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of like. Like the creative industry is trying to like, you know, take that and and make it mean something else when it's like, no, no. Like as somebody who went to architecture school, that's a very specific job type. That's a very specific mm -hmm. title to have. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of work, you know, like getting licensed and like doing that, I think is commend like incredibly commendable. So I'm like, respect that. Don't call yourself a creative architect. I'm a comfort because you're not like you're not architect. You're not architect. You can't just like take that, throw the word creative in front of it, and be like, yeah, I'm a creative architect. No. You can't do that. You can't. That ain't happening. No, that's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying we're we're leaving the conversation or, or leaving the, the the table. It's just it's just about you know, this is my expertise. You got yours, but like respect. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just hear like lineage is the word that Mary used and, and craft, mm. right? lineage and craft and how the craft is constantly transforming. Like it's not, it's not in one state, right. uh, especially when you're talking about black women. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely want to show this next piece if that's cool with y'all. Please do. Uh, yeah, please. This, this piece is featuring a black woman um, and I, I hope y'all enjoy it. I'm not going to talk about it too much. I feel like it's, it's best to just watch it, so. Uh, this piece is called Tears.
Show me another building that's doing that. Show, show, <laughs> show, show me a building that's doing that. Show, show it to me. I want to see it. Well, look, you the one who had the AJ quote up there. Mm. That mm. was so strange. I was I was wondering about that. Like mm. trying to hear, you know what I mean? Like the, mm-hmm. what is, what is the quote, the sort of, the kind of promise of the building and then the, and then... <laughs> The range, the range. I remember seeing this video, like it was, it went viral. Um, I'm just, the people in the background, they were killing me. You better stop. Like when she, <laughs> when she switches, like incredible. Incredible. What made you uh, make this piece, Corday? What know. prompted you when you sit down? What what is what is your practice? What mm. is your practice like? What, what is my practice? Not uh, like what are you doing, but like what yeah. is that, like what is it? What is it? Is it like you're in the shower? You're like okay, I have to do this thing, or like someone calls you and you just have to do this, or like you're like I'm gonna you find this. You're online, you find the thing, and then you're you know you listen to a song and you think like how can you talk a little bit about your process? Maybe not your practice, your process. Yeah, I think some folks might refer to me as like the top Google searcher in the world. I'm like, a, I'm just, I'm just in the Google, you know, uh, shout out to Google. I, I think I just like, re- I'm really into searching. I get through, I get to, to wormholes. I like click something, I click and I keep going. And I think very much it's like a relentlessness of just searching. And then the materials just come from that. I, I'm, I kid you not, like that's how all this stuff comes. I'm just looking at something else and something else catches my eye. And um, maybe that's how sound works. You know, you hear one sound and you hear another and it just keeps keeps right. it fluid. Um, yeah, I, I think that's how I work. I'm just really in tuned. I really just try to stay in tuned as much as possible. I think, um, you know, the way Witten works with his, with his paintings, right? Uh, very, I heard Fred Moten talk about his work and how he's very much uh, into devotion. Like, not the idea of like the church necessarily, but there is something spiritually connected, you know, to his work uh, as a fabricator, as a painter, as a sculptor, and the work that he produces. And um, maybe it's a piece of that too. Uh, and then just, just joy. I think a lot of it is just about playing, making room and space to, to, you know, play with materials and things. Um, mm. I know that's a long winded answer, but yeah. No, no, I think it's not long winded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not much of a talker, you know, you know. Mm. Um, can I show a video of, um, I want to show a video I found speaking of wormholes and speaking of the way the kind of, I think that my husband calls it the creative cloud. Like when you get into the creative, you're just like, it's like this kind of, you know, you describe it a little bit like, you know, Googling for me, it's like happens a little on the internet, mostly like walking around and, and driving around the city, you know, reading books and looking at the city. Like that's like my, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but that's, um, this 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 video I found of um, a tour of the interior of a um, building designed by Paul Williams um, that's down the street from my house. Okay, mm, Margaret. Put, oh, sorry, that's okay. Sorry, share screen. I hope that I can um, sounds share sounds. So you all have to tell me if you can. Phil, you have to tell us if we can, if you can hear. So this is family savings and loans. So when I was teaching my um, my vertical last semester, we were just focusing a lot on on a series of buildings along Crenshaw, and I knew didn't know that much about the buildings. But there's always a, you know, you talk about same thing, Corday. Like you talk about like how, uh, like there's always a sense. You always there's like a, there's always like a little sense, and then you like yeah. you pick up on. You have to listen to that. I mean, I do. Um, right. Anyways, this is a. Can you hear it? Yeah. Definitely, yeah though. I don't know if everybody else can though. Yeah, sound is, sound good. is good. Okay, yeah. great. In nineteen like eighty five, the building was built in mm. 62. Mm. Um, bank. Um, this building uh, was designed by Mr. Paul Williams, a very noted black 
architect who passed away just very recently. Uh, Mr. Williams had the tile work in the front on the handmade in Mexico and was brought up here in pieces and the workmen came along with it to put to install it. And the, I'd like to talk about the lighting inside, the lighting. This is Mrs. Grant. Inside. This is her building this that she commissioned with inside. her husband. You mm. were telling me that the building was built in 19 1963, that it was open March the 1st, 1963. Mm -hmm. So a building that was a loan, a building for a bank, um, a black owned bank to loan to families in order for them to build, for them to own their own homes um, mm -hmm. at, at a time when, when a lot of black, black people couldn't get loans. Yes. All right, now we're gonna go inside of the family savings and loan. Okay. Stop action. Stop action. <laughs> <laughs> This particular lighting fixture was the very first one of its kind installed in the city of Los Angeles. Go ahead. Well, uh, okay, let's wait a second. Does she have to repeat the lighting? The section on the right hand side is our teller section. As you can see, they're quite busy now. These people are lined up, either depositing their money in payments on their property or cash and checks. Mm -hmm. I understand that uh, when, you, when the building was, was built, the upstairs area, which n now holds your um, main offices, manager office. Hold on, I'm going to take you downstairs. It's my grandson who's employed here to the basement. help direct mm -hmm. us around. Mm -hmm. This is David. Hi, David. Look at this Glad interior. You guys doing the tour with us. All right. We'll just follow you guys. Okay. This is Mama. Hmm. All right. Mayor, do you know if this building is still... Uh, yeah, it's still there. It just doesn't look like this anymore, though. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't look like this anymore. You've got a I forgot. I'm trying to find the moment where she says... Um, and this is Scott Evans. How much she loves the colors yeah. and the way the interior decorator, mm. Mm. Um, who is Paul's Paul Williams interior decorator, did it. How how lovely it is. And um, anyways, it's a long video, but it's all it. What's amazing? Clyburn. And uh, Mrs. Clyburn is the loan officer for the bank. Loan officer. Loan officer for the bank. Yes. For the bank. Uh huh. Well, hello. Hi there. I'm very good. <laughs> I love this. I, I love this thing. I love it. It's just like the black, just black space. I just love it so much. It just, it, it, it just actually like it. I'm gonna stop sharing because I mean it's a long video. It's like 20 minutes, but it's um, it's just to me like that. Like, show me an architecture that does that. Like, mm. it, you know, it's just like there's just something so tender about um, and the way that uh, the way that she talks about all of the details of the, the, the artwork that they'd commissioned and the the kind of decor and all this stuff is so personal about like who's going to be in there student groups who come through because this is kind of like very you know it's it's you know it's a, it's a historical space you know because people want to come and visit because it's like a you know it's like a beacon you know a mm. beacon of achievement you know and i don't know I, I i love this the building still stands it's right down the street from my house and you know i've been looking at it for a very long time i didn't know it's not really even on the list of popular buildings that that the poly he's done so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of buildings in la mm -hmm. uh but he uh he's speaking of but he um and I didn't, and so I couldn't, when I was looking it up, like his, there, I didn't know it was, his, it was his building until I finally found, went into a little wormhole at Google wormhole, found this thing about Earl, Earl Grant, who was the owner and then found out, I was like, oh my God, it's a Paul Williams building, and mm. found the video and found all this stuff. And so anyway, that's, uh, there I'll sh that's my share. That's another share. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. I mean, I definitely see with that video, I also see your work and the tenderness is the word that you used. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's something that you think about with your own personal work. Like that, I think you you have that. And um, I'm wondering where that comes from. Does it come from watching materials like that, reading something or where do you, where do you get that? I don't know how you would describe 
mm. you know, or if you even want to describe. Yeah, I mean, I just think that there's so, I think this came up in a conversation, which is like so much, um, like, I don't know. I think I just project so much like love and like liveness to the way mm. to, 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 to buildings and to interiors. I just like, to me, there's so much, there's, there's so much, there's so much life in it that tr trying to figure like the lighting of a space, the, the, the detailing of a space, the stories that it holds, the, the plants you put in it, like all of that is to me is like the arch an architectural project of, of, of seeing and feeling and thinking about, I don't know, so it's that, you know, like I just don't disassociate. I don't break it out. You know, when I was watching your video, the first one you showed Corday of the dancer, you know, and that just beautiful movement and the kind of the column response between the two bodies, you know, the stage and the bodies and the bodies. And then the, and then the next layer of like surround, which is like all of the people and then all the yeah. working against the wall. And it's yeah. like, it's like, there's so many layers of architecture tech take, taking place. So to me, yeah. like, where is that building? The building is like, and it's not like I'm going to read it as architecture, but like, no, this is mm -hmm. like, this is an architecture. Right. Yeah, this, it's like wrestling with the complexity of human life. Like if, if yeah, I think that's what these, the, that video is doing. That's what the video that you just showed. It's like, it's wrestling with that quite directly. And um, yeah, I love that description. I love the way you just described it, Mir. Oh, sorry, that's not on purpose. Um, not to, you feel like showing like, something? Share, share something, not to. Um, I mean, we're now on the Sorry. administrative floor. That's video yeah. still going. Can you show the link to that? I want to watch that. Yeah, definitely share the link to that so we all can watch that. For know. sure, I'll put it right now. Um, I'll put it on the, I'll put it on the, um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure out a way to do it. I have, a, I have, I have, not to share more. I have, and I hope, uh, Corda, you can share more. I have some more too I want to share. That's not so um, sentimental. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay to be sentimental. Sentimental is great. There's it's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> I'm into it. Um, all right. I'm going to just share with you guys what I'm working on right now. So don't even worry about this. Sound me. It's just... I'm working on these, these like new pieces. Um, you might have to mute yourself or mute the uh, sound. Oh, sorry, I just mute the sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Here we go. Um, yeah, I'm just working on these new. I don't know why that's glitching so hard. Not to. This is amazing. Let me, re oh, let me reopen. Where's what? <laughs> Hold on, y'all. My messy um here. Uh, 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 uh. This is what y'all wanted. The desktop share. You know, this yeah. is it. You know, sometimes yeah. it's a little messy. I don't know why that one's glitching so hard. Come on. Yeah. You can do it. I need a new computer, y'all. My laptop is is on its way out. I don't even know. We're gonna start a community fundraiser for not to. <laughs> um, we about to, you know, raise. All right, all right. We'll, we'll just the, put that out there right now. So, yes. Um. So here's the like. I'm. I've been casting my face. Obviously, like this is just some stuff I've been playing around with. But mm. with this one, um. I'm using this type of silicone called dragon skin, and there's just something about that, like, translucent. See, I don't know. It just, I'm loving it. Um, these are, like, I don't know. There's, it's pretty fun. I'm good, y'all. The background, the audio on these is ridiculous. But, um, yeah, I don't know. This is what I'm working on right now. Um, just kind of playing around, trying stuff. I love dried flowers. Like mm. that's those are my like that's my favorite thing um, right now. Like because some of the shoots I work on, we got to buy like hundreds of dollars of like florals for from the flower from the flower market downtown. Mm. And when the shoots over, it's like okay, what are we doing with these? And so I just take them most of the time. I'll take them and like 
hang them upside down to dry. Um, mm. Yeah, so my apartment's like full of these like random dried bouquet, dried flower bouquets. Um, mm. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I wanted to like do something with them or play around with something. This one was a test, I think, not as successful. Um, this middle one, I kind of just started crushing them to make them like smaller pieces. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They, but they look crystalline. They do. Yeah, so it's so it's I'm I'm sort of going back to playing around with the same materials I was using for my thesis, but like in a different way. Mm. Um, so this is that stuff I was using for the windows, that rubber glass. That's why mm -hmm. like this broke. <clears throat> this is my first test, and I was peeling it out of the mold, and it just like snapped off where my nose was, like just, and it took all of it with it, and so um, that kind of like shard breaking is is um what i really like about the material mm. um you know they use this stuff mostly for like special effects to like make fake glass bottles if you gotta like like actors gotta like hit each other with a glass bottle over the head or like something you know because it's um it's not sharp obviously but it just it breaks like it is sharp um yeah it's pretty fun and what made you want to fill it like fill it Hmm? What made you want to fill it with like, I see plants, I see uh, some just, you know, yeah, plant so material. I'm just, I'm playing around with trying a couple different things. Cause this, obviously this is a piece I'm, I'm still developing. So I got a version that's got like these tiny scale figures on the inside. Let me, mm. you know what? I can actually grab it. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tour around There's a my, question on the chat that maybe we can pitch back and forth. It said that um, from Jeremy Kamal, he says, the role of the body is seen in all of your work, whether cosmetically through dance and performance or architecture, has your work given you new insight on the body and the way we relate to it? Mm. That's a little turn. That's a little oh. turn at the end of that. Yeah, yeah. that was a turn. A little turn. Hmm. I like that. That was a little turn. I like that. How oh. has my work given me new insight on the body and how we relate to it? I think with my work, I mean, obviously, I'm always thinking about, like, how people relate to the black body, you know? And I think Ben touched on this yesterday um, in, in some, of the, some of the work he was showing and, and what he was talking about. Just, um, you know, this sort of, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm trying to, like articulate a thought take your time it's all right right here, right here um yeah i don't know i think it's just i think it's for me i'm not it's not sort of specifically the body i think it's always just about like here right like mm. <laughs> my face not not the whole not the whole the whole thing um but that um i don't know that there's there's I guess I'm always thinking about how to um, feel comfortable in mm. one's skin, you know? Like, how do we, how do we, as Black people, like, move through spaces to not feel like we're being, like, gawked at or, like, looks like kind of, like, kind of, like, off, you know? It's like, and just sort of owning our looks and, and, and you know, really thinking about like, you know, beauty standards and, and sort of challenging like um, the billboards you see and stuff. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I made this one yesterday. Wow. It's got these little, it's got these little guys in it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It's I mean, fun. When you, when you when you talk about this the skin and um also think of just your choice in color like i think you just have a natural ability to command so the color so I, I don't know if that's i don't know where that comes from i don't know <laughs> like, yeah the gas the gas i don't know i just I, I just like colors i don't i just have always liked colors like um it's just fun i feel like Color is like 
necessary. You got to like liven, liven everything up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know that I necessarily command them in any way. I just, I just can feel like what I, I think I've, um, a sense for what colors look good together and mm. which ones don't. And sometimes, um, it's just fun to play around with them. I don't know. But I think there is something to like being, cause I think like as a people, we're just colorful, you know, mm-hmm. like wherever we're at, whoever we're talking to, it's like, Hey, what's good? You know, mm-hmm. like just energy. And I think like, I'm, I think that, that, I think that, that's how I, I work with color most of the time is just thinking about like what vibe is that like what these three colors together these five colors together like what is what is the energy that these are are sort of giving you know yeah while I'm looking at mirrors like room and I'm looking at the red hoodie right and your orange sweater and that that whole relationship right now is, is giving me it's like vi- it's like it's like 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 vibrating isn't it it's right. vibrating you it know is, yeah. and so while you're talking I'm just looking at mirror screen and um yeah just taking it all in I'm gonna put this there was you guys there was I don't I, I don't remember what it was it was some sort of an event or something that I was on or something I, I don't know what it was it was really recently so I'm really like trying really hard to remember it but I don't know what it was but it was, I think it, I don't think it was a conversation with architects um, because I'm realizing that I felt like it, there was, it was a moment. I, I really wish I knew what it was. I'll remember it in a second. But I realized that how, um, ah, I wish I could remember, but um, how, oh, I know. It was at a, it was actually at a celebration, a birthday celebration, one of my best friends turned 40 and she, I mean, she lives a life of like expanded liberation. Like she is just creative. Uh, I mean, she is an unbounded like human being. I mean, she is fully, I mean, she's very, very, very deep. Mm. Super spiritual, um, queer, uh, black, uh, Muslim, mm. uh, healer, uh, writer, academic creator. She's just like, so the women that came together to celebrate her had so much knowledge. I was just like, like it was like 25 people in there. Everyone was sharing things and reading things and stuff like that. And I was like, I was like, I felt so school. Like, I was like, there's no, like every, all the little nuggets of like here and there, here and there that we drop, like, Oh, like the world is full of knowledge. And like, there's all kinds of ways of like, you know, you just have like, like it, we were like on a totally different paradigm conversation conversation with my at such a high level. It was yeah. so woke. It was so incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, yeah. I was thinking about that that like charge, that like mental mm-hmm. and spirit charge that I got being around that kind of energy mm-hmm. and that kind of advanced, really advanced sort of like 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 living a life of risk and love mm-hmm. and, and joy mm-hmm. and. And that's, um, and, uh, you know, we saw that this week too, the, some of the incredible people that came on and, and, and I, and I, you know, when you're talking about that, not to just like, how do you start to talk about the like conversation you have just in, in your room with the colors that you see or things like this, like all of the, the ways in which the, um, like trying to find, um, yeah, trying to, trying to engage in like uh this kind of like bounty of of knowledge that is that is a that is in the world visual non-visual all of that like that seeking you know and also the faith that it's sort of there um i I think that that is uh, such an incredible like well to draw from and also reminder sometimes when it feels like does this even matter or whatever, you know? Yeah, see, I'm all, that's the space I'm trying to like pull myself out of all the time. That like, what is, is this even like? A thing. A thing. Like, <laughs> a thing. you know, I think like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. in a space right now where I'm, I'm trying to like, like you said, just kind of be like boundless and just kind of create whatever, you know? Because I think like, being like in architecture school, there's so many mediums you touch, you know, that mm-hmm. you like, you get pick up so many skills. There's so many directions you could like take all of your work in. And mm-hmm. it's just a question of like, 
deciding whether you're you're gonna like stick to one thing or just like just say fuck it i'm gonna do everything all at once all the time like mm. you know but i think that's kind of scary <laughs> it's mm. like whoa you know like i don't know um yeah that's where that's where i'm at right now mm. um we're just trying mm-hmm. to we're trying to get there and be like fearless in in our creativity Mm. yeah yeah i'm I'm feeling that i feel like um i feel like i'm constantly in an upward fall Mm. you know it's like it's it's going up but it's a fall you know when i when i was um i don't know if i I should share this but uh when i was working on virgil's project um Mm. very early on i was talking to producer and we were seeing some clips. We were making a lot of stuff. And I was, uh, I thought it was going to be a failure. Like, I really, I was like, nah, this ain't it. You know, this ain't, this is not working. You know, I really had a down, downward spiral. And, um, but I, but it goes to what you're saying now too. I just stayed in it. I stayed in the process right. because that's the making process. I think there's a, there's always a, it's a pulse. Right. That's how you, that's how you know you're alive. Right. We're feeling the pulse of the work. Right. Sometimes it's a, it's a fall, but sometimes it's also a, a, a flight. And so um, I'm always in that balance too. always in the middle. I love that. I love that. I love the idea of the upward fall. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, Corday. Yeah. Um, OK, can I show you guys something? Yeah. 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 Can I show you something? Um, this is corny. You know, I'm no, a little no, corny. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen, Corny's good. bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. You no, know, I'm a it. little corny because uh, you just know that's how you know. That's how I am. <laughs> Big old mama. We love it. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about Sound ex- Song Exploder. Do you know this? The, ne- the, the Netflix Sound ex- Song Exploder? No. Okay. Not yet. I don't know. So, oh, wait, I got to stop and, and make sure the sound, do the audio. Let me share again. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, so Alicia Keys, so this is whatever. It, it's a, it started as a podcast. Now it's like these little little Netflix things. But um, they this this guy basically talks to artists, musicians, about like, the process of making a single song. And there's this, um, the one that I want to show you a couple of clips from is the one with Alicia Keys um, working with Sanfa uh, doing this piece, this song called Three Hour Drive. You guys familiar? Do you know Sanfa? I do. Yeah. So let's get into this song because, oh my God, this song is so incredible. And I love Alicia Keys because, like, that girl is just a hardworking mom. That's what you're talking about. Mm. I do. That's what the whole show is. <laughs> I think it was actually the piano. Yeah, it's strange because I think making music is like a language. It's like kind of my way of communicating with people. I definitely go into this kind of stream of consciousness sort of world. Sometimes it feels like I was in an alternate reality. It was such a beautiful mm. melody and almost so dreamy that was hypnotic. There's like a bit of sweetness to it and the sort of like a longing. For me, it has this kind of hazy feeling of memory drifting away. Something that you're sort of chasing, but you can't quite reach. Just by the chords alone, you, you felt something so powerful, but to give it word, was what the journey was about. So now we're kind of looking for the line. We t- the story of this song is she had just had her son and Sanfa had just lost his mother and they were put in the studio together to do a song. They didn't know where it was going and then they produced this song that was really about the sort of mirrored experience of giving life, giving life to a baby boy, being a baby mm-hmm. boy who lost his mom and the sort of like the kind of bittersweet of that um, and the kind of space of that and the kind of them kind of connecting to that um, uh, realization of the of the, the kind of mirroring of their experience. 
Um, and uh, let me get in there real quick. Get back in there. Clay. Almost there. Is it going to go? It might not just because it's. Making this beat. Yeah. Making it. Just thinking, like, oh my gosh, is there anything that she can't do? It's so loud and ridiculous. It's good. It needs it. <laughs> It was so pretty that I wanted it to feel more like rough. I, I just, I love this. Yeah. And I love, the, I love, you know, obviously this idea of when it feels too pretty, you need to make it rough. Like, mm. and that as a way of like getting at these sort of tones of meaning and uh, kind of that kind of mix, mm. that kind of mix you know, um, in the world. Like I can't, I can't, I can't have it without that. Oh, this song is beautiful. I love it. We can listen to the song, let me tell you, but. Um... Numbers two, I'll ask him, don't play the hat. Make it like it's the smallest set you ever had. I just love that there's something about the space. When you add less, it feels bigger. There's like an element of just like sound. Mm. That's, my, that's my little share. When it, when it feels too mm. pretty, you make it rough. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm, I'm, I'm into that. Like, I think that's, yeah, I'm into that. When it feels too pretty, you make it rough. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Um, I, I, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't have anything else to say. I just wanted to put it out there. I just wanted to like leave a little, little, little bit of a beat being there, you know. Uh, thank you. I mean, we, yeah, we don't have to say nothing. We could just glide out, you know. <laughs> um, uh, I could share one thing or we could, we could talk a little bit. It's up to y'all. No, sure. You got one more, no? Yeah, this is the last one. Um, Let's see it. And then uh, that should be it. Mm. Uh, uh, this one's called Blood, so mm. that's one.
we let the Redeemer, the Lord, tell the stories. By His words we are walking testimonies. For thine is the kingdom and the glory. And we'll praise you, Lord, forever, because you're holy. Yeah. That, that's it. Yes. That was beautiful. Um, yo, I don't know if any of you went to to the Sunday Sunday storm or Sunday service that was happening here in, at the forum. That whole perf that whole show is so powerful. Like I'm Muslim, I don't go to church, but like there's something about gospel music <laughs> and a bunch of black people dressed <laughs> the same way, in a beautiful stage set, like just a worshiping i don't know it's just amazing amazing you know i have to say that one of the things uh corday that i love about your energy is um uh how much just the way that you um ask us to take our time like you take time like to see your work it takes time you know to be and i think that that's one of the uh, it's just, a, it's, it's a something I, I acknowledge. I reckon I, I really appreciate it. I learn from that. And so I, I really, really love, I love taking my time looking at the work that you do. And I love that energy that you bring really very, very much. Wow. I, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you, Mary, for saying that, you know, I'm glad to take time with y'all, you know, just take this space up. Um, and thank you, Tunde, uh, for establishing this. And Aline, thank you so much. I'm not sure how much time we have, but. Uh, I came on, I mean, I, like I told you guys in our in our meeting before, like I'd give you as much time as you wanted. Um, we were scheduled to go until 1230. So, I mean, I came on to just kind of wrap up. Um, but let me just take Do this it. time, please. Uh, I, I know that I've said this all to you guys um, privately, but let me just like take this moment to just give you your flowers um, when everybody can see them. Thank you so much for being uh, role models and mentors to me. Like in the realest way, I don't know how else to explain this. Like these are my dreams coming true. Like a young black architect, not like recognizing that I could have a space to just feel how I feel right now within the schools. Again, uh, shout out to Hernan and the support we got. Um, it's just it, this this morning was so important to me as, as important as the rest of the the week was and i'm gonna save i'm gonna save a lot of what i have to say for tonight but um just thank you thank you thank you um if you have anything else please feel free to, the floor is yours um i'm just incredibly moved yeah i feel the same way uh today was another emotional day. Um, I got goosebumps multiple times. It was just so beautiful. And like, y'all just vibing together. Like it felt like I was like, like I said, like in the living room with you guys, like in the kitchen, like it was so cool to just kind of be a fly on the wall and listen and like, just take everything in and like literally just be in awe the entire morning. Like I just feel so grateful and so thankful for like the entire week and to have you guys as faculty and to be a part of my life. Like, like sincerely, like, thank you so much. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for organizing all of this. Yeah, for like, real. All of this, this is all, this is all y'all. You know? I actually think you could, oops, sorry. I don't, I didn't actually think you could do it. Right. <laughs> y'all pulled it off. Y'all pulled it very pulled honest. It that's big <laughs> I was like, you know, we go on these meetings. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And then it started coming together. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, y'all brought this together, like, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, really, all the all the love and the flowers go to you too. So, and, and anyone else who's been involved in this, um, you know, thank you for creating the space for us. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so valuable. And I hope, you know, whoever's watching, you know, you rewatch it. And uh, this becomes, a, you know, something that we all can appreciate and value over time. So it's like our own little faculty Fridays at five. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was really fun. That was really fun. Yeah. That was really fun. Great. That was really fun. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, this is not the end. 
We still have a finale tonight at five. Um, please join us for just an overall wrap up. And um, and in general, this is not the end. I mean, again, I'm going to get into this tonight, but like, first off, this is going. Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So like <laughs> Friday doesn't cut anything. And actually it's like Black History Year at this point. So <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say that. Um, but we're going to keep it going tonight. Hopefully everybody will join us. Thank you so much for coming this morning and have an amazing Friday. We'll be back next year again for the same thing. Black Lives Matter Week of Actions is an annual thing at SciArc. So you go, you go, you go. There we go. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye, y'all. Peace. I see you all night. <laughs>